the way we perceive ourselves, uh, our relationship with others, our place in the world. So theater is a way to um, interrogate all this and find answers that might be critical, exceptional, interesting to ponder. So that questioning started uh, in my first year of my degree and then the more classes I took, um, the more I learned that other theorists also questioned each other, questioned their own beliefs, questioned what was happening in society. Uh, for me, theater is first of all life. It's a life experience and uh, that's quite important, I think. Uh, it's an aesthetic experience uh, and it's also a meaning experience. So. Um, there is various ways of describing this, this extreme power that, that you have, which is, or that, that happens in theater, which can appear as magical or spiritual or emotional sometimes too, right? Sometimes do you connect to, to, to something you see and you don't know why. So that's the magic. You know, when, when a theater piece works and you have strangers holding hands at the end of the performance, it's because you show them that there, there's something that's the same in all of them. But you can say the same about a painting. And I consistently say the same about a bee visiting a flower. I mean, that has a magic too. And it's decidedly not theater. I think theater is, is, is an experience. And uh, especially in this day and age when so much of our life is online, that we, we, need, we need a space where we can come together and go through an experience. It's the ambiguity that it creates, it's the, it's, uh, it's the layers of meaning that keep on multiplying. You know, theatre, when it's well done, it doesn't propose a single answer or a single interpretation. It's always elusive and elusive, if you wish. And so I think the, the correlations between these things are really interesting, which is why I think it's important that various artists practice together because you can learn from one person's um, ideas and notions of their practice and how it applies to yours and how you can translate them. When we try to understand uh, what happens, and ultimately critical theory, I think, always aims at a certain kind of liberation, liberation from rules, which is a paradox because critical theory itself sort of tries to set up rules. But, and it, it's a constant paradox. That's why critical theory renews itself all the time because our understanding has to be renewed all the time. But I think the body is innately scholarly. I think we can be scholars of the body. I think there's a library inside of us that's experiential, that's sentient that needs to be challenged. And we have to practice that because we're not encouraged enough to do that. I think it depends on the performer because I think that definitely when you're looking at what a director is doing, what a dramaturge is doing, a lot of time what an actor is doing as well, is there's a lot of theoretical backing that goes into the actual training itself and understanding not necessarily where a particular movement comes from, but why it's so important to a culture, even if that's not something we're consciously thinking about. Like, why are we doing realism? Because we're, we all know within North American sensibility is that that's what people are wanting to see here right now. I think that where, what influences me most is the rebellion. So the rebellion from the normative. So um, right now for me, in my world, within my peers, um, post-traumatic theater, is, is that rebellion from the normative? In certain groups of people, we, we have an, an idea of what we think their place is in society. And suddenly we, we, we see something that, that breaks out of that. And, and we have to, to find a new place for them. And that means shifting everything else around too. And this is an extremely, extremely powerful um, tool or, or, or a situation or a sphere um, that can that can produce the, the most intense experiences you can think of. I think it's important to look at a play from different perspectives and ultimately it's what you want you know your production to be that dictates what you're gonna do with it. You know how do we tell our stories to each other? 
you know. I mean, of course, there's many forms of storytelling, but theater is actually the quintessence of that. It's where people get together to tell their stories in a space that is not actually allowed or it's not, it's not, it's not possible much anymore in a mediated environment, a hyper-mediated environment. I think that the, that the future for theater would come from those people that write about intermediality where theater is the ultimate intermedial medium and, be, and the idea being that eventually because theater always revolutionizes itself when new media are born because it's the thing that can actually show you how meaning is made in a live kind of way. Well, the reality has got pretty large limits. So even if you, I mean, right, we cannot perceive microscopic uh, entities unless we use the technology, right? So it's not just about that. In a way, it's reminding us of knowledge that we forgot about. You start to perceive differently. You, you, you start to realize that the way you look at things actually affect what's happening. Um, the theater has evolved and every time a new art, a new technology, a new technique comes about, it announces the death of theater. We're always worried about what we do, what we end up doing in theater. We just have a party and dance on the grave. That exists at the level of the writing, the playwriting, but it also exists at the level of the you know, directorial interpretation and vision um, and dramaturgical imagination. And the play then is possibly thousands of years later being put on stage by people that didn't know the culture, didn't know the language, and quite possibly are the best people to find out layers that are buried within the text. Yeah, exactly. Breaking down the binary that's come to exist in theater and starting to create something that's that's a conversation with the audience, a literal conversation, instead of just somebody shouting at you and telling you what it's supposed to be.